Kyle says, serious question. Why did God create the devil when he should have known what he was going to do? Why does he allow his interference on earth when we can do bad things all by ourselves? Why overcomplicate the situation? Why stack the deck in this way against maximizing the souls that God could save from eternal dam damnation? Can I just say how appreciative I am of, of you asking this question, Kyle? Because I've had the same question many times in my life. And actually, I think, you know, was one of the people who helped me get clarity on it. So <laughs> I'm grateful to hear it. Right. <laughs> I don't yeah. remember giving you clarity, so thank God. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we talked about this at one point many years ago. You probably did. You probably did. Um, you know, and uh, Kyle, this is a really good question. I appreciate it. Um, you know, and I think it's good to come to God and come to the Bible with questions, you know, because that's how we really learn. And that's how we, you know, grow in our relationship with God and, you know, get to know him in a personal way. And, you know, when it comes to, you know, the devil, it, it is a complicated thing because it's like, God, you know, why didn't you just destroy him? Or why did you make him in the first place? This doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. And that's definitely something that I think we all grapple with, um, you know, because we're all suffering because of this one terrible being influencing our earth and making our lives even worse than they need more than they need to be it seems mm -hmm. and so it's kind of like you know god why why even make him you knew what was going to happen if you're god you know everything so i totally get uh where you're coming from um and i do want to share with you a few things that kind of make it a little more clear as to like oh okay so <laughs> you know god is not necessarily to blame or to um you know god's not you know wrong in what the way he operates. God is perfect. His ways are perfect. And so um, even though it might not be the way we want it to be um, in the big picture, it's the right thing to do. And I think that that's kind of where um, we kind of have to take a step back and look at the, the grand picture of everything and understanding, you know, why is there a devil in the first place and why are things playing out the way that they are? So going back to, you know, first of all, who is the devil? What, what is, what is he? Why was he made? You know, did God make a devil? No. Um, and that, so I want to make sure that that's first of all, very clear. God didn't make an evil, demonic, yucky, bad thing that was only out to get you. God didn't make that. <laughs> that's not what God does. He doesn't make evil in that way. Um, but he does create beings that have the ability to choose. And that's, um, kind of where the 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 origin of of the devil is in that he was an angel he was a glorious angel um, you can read about this a little bit more clearly on bibleask.org we have a lot of questions um, and a very popular one we get is uh, was satan never a glorious angel and the, the answer is yes and you see this in the book of ezekiel chapter 28 um, uh, this chapter is about uh, a prophecy against the king of Tyre. Um, it starts out and then it kind of moves into like kind of um, paralleling the king of Tyre to basically the attributes of the devil and how the devil act, um, originated and, and acted. So if you look up um, at Ezekiel chapter 28, um, in starting verse 12, it says, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say to him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So this being was, first of all, perfect in beauty. And it says, Thou hast been in Eden. Obviously, the king of Tyre <laughs> was not in Eden, not in any way. You know, Adam and Eve were kicked out of Eden a long, long time ago. So this cannot be the literal king of Tyre. It's likening the king of Tyre to the devil and how um, the devil fell. It says, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, and gold. The workmanships of thy tabrets, which is like, like the cords, like he was... Um, his voice basically, um, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee the, do the day thou wast created. I believe that the the devil, before he was a devil, um, which is called, he was previously called Lucifer, he was able to sing and had a beautiful voice and a gift of music. And that was his role. That was a, um, 
why he was created to be a, an angel that was beautiful, that glorified God with music. Um, it says in verse 14, thou art the anointed cherub that covers. Um, where do you see a, an anointed cherub, a special cherub that covers? You see that in the holy place of the sanctuary. And we know that there is a sanctuary in heaven. You see that in Hebrews chapter eight, verses one and two, as well as in the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 15 and 17. Um, it's very clear. The Bible says that God created a sanctuary in heaven. And so this anointed cherub this angel was a covering cherub. There's only two angels that do this special work of covering the Shekinah glory in the holy place or the most holy place in God's sanctuary in his temple. And so that was the role of Lucifer. He was to be a very special and glorious and beautiful and <laughs> angel that would glorify God. That's what God created it was a good angel. However, as you keep reading in, um, Ezekiel 28, verse 14, it says, um, Thou art the anointed cherub that covers. I have set thee also. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God that walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And verse 15 pinpoints what happened. Thou was perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. So he was perfect. God made a beautiful, perfect, heavenly angel. But sin crept into his heart. And it says, um, in verse 16, by the multitude of your merchandise, you have filled the midst of you with a violence. You have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you out as um, profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. And verse 17 kind of gives you again more detail. Um, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may behold you. So basically, God made a beautiful, glorious angel, um, which if you look in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, you see this again, a very similar story of basically the origin of the devil that he was um, in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. It says, how thou art fall fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you were cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations. And in verse 13, it says, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So basically you see pride in the heart of Lucifer, this angel who was made beautiful and glorious and made to glorify God, but yet God gave him the ability to choose and the ability to reason. And so the devil decided to, to glorify himself because he knew he was very beautiful and was very talented. And so basically that's the origin of the devil. Not that God made this nasty thing that was the purpose of it was to tempt people and do bad things, but rather the purpose of creating Lucifer was to be a glorious angel to glorify God. Now he made a choice to, to worship himself and to choose pride. And yes, he was um, he's basically <laughs> led against the, you know, the army of God ever since you read about this in revelation chapter 12 um, of, you know, Jesus being Michael, the archangel um, contending with the devil. And um, it says that I'll summarize, but basically that he took a third of the stars of heaven with him, with his tail, the tail meaning lies. Uh, you see that in the book of Isaiah and stars meaning angels. So yes, the devil tempted the angels and he took a third of them with him. And it says that he was cast down to the earth because that we are basically the only planet where we've given into um, the deception of the devil. And basically because Adam and Eve chose to sin, our first parents, um, we are now left with this choice of are we going to worship God or are we going to worship the devil or which is basically his way, which is selfishness. And so it's not that God wants you to have temptation and have suffering and have all these bad things, but rather it's, you know, if God destroyed Lucifer as soon as he sinned or, you know, quarantined him and didn't, you know, basically play fair and, you know, allow him to say, to offer his opinion, then, God wouldn't be fair and God is a fair and a just God. And so what you have here is a great controversy between Christ and his angels and the devil and his angels, Christ and his method and his way and his government and the government of the devil. And so God is basically saying, choose, you make a choice. I am going to allow you to choose 
which side you want to be on. And I'm going to do everything in my power to save you. But yes, there's a devil who's going to do everything in his power to, you know, have you lost. And because God is a fair and a just God, we have to um, ride out this wave. It's not forever. It will come to an end. Thank God. You know, the devil has but a short time before him and his angels are destroyed and this world is no more. But God cannot be a fair God and just say, oh, I never gave you the chance to hear his side of the story. And I just wiped him out. Um, and just trust me, it, you, you'd rather not know. It's kind of, you would question God's God's truth. You would, you would question him. And so God didn't want that um, break in our relationship. He didn't want us to just fear him or just, you know, be robots who didn't have the, the ability to choose. God gave us the ability of choice. And so I believe that's basically, you know, why the devil is allowed to do what he is allowed to do. But again, don't forget it's, but for a short time and, you know, God promises that there'll be a new heaven and new earth. The devil and his angels will be no more and will, um, sin will never rise up again. And so, but we'll always have that memory of, yes, this is the consequence of sin. This is the consequence of rebellion against God and his government. And we can trust God that he is a fair and a just God who will give us the freedom of choice and who will, and only when there's freedom is there true love. Because if, if we can't choose, if we don't even have the opportunity to choose, we really don't love because um, my dad always said, love is freedom. So I hope that answers your question. Jerry, Wendy, any other thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you covered all the main points, and this, this is something that you could talk about for days, right? It's such a deep topic. Um, it is. Uh, I'm like, ah, I want to say so much more, but I'm trying to, to keep it concise <laughs> as possible. But yeah, it's, it's a big yeah. question, and I appreciate this question. And if you want to um, look into more details, again, we have some really great answers on this topic already at BibleAsk.org. Um, on our website and um, yeah, be sure to study it out for yourself and um, keep asking questions. And uh, we really appreciate you, our friend Kyle. Yeah. And, and just know as, we, as Bible says in Romans eight twenty eight, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the calling according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. So it looks terrible. We might not be understand why, but it's mm -hmm. for a better reason. Mm -hmm. And all this is building up to so that, there never has to be sin again. Like Tina, do what? What's the verse? I, I forget. It, like that, you know, it will not come a second time. You will not rise again. It, it's in the yeah. Old Testament, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. But yeah, it will not rise yeah. again. Um, I have to look that up. But yeah, yeah. exactly. Because it basically God's plan is let sin show itself to be as terrible as it is, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that everybody agrees God's law is right. God is good. God is totally right. Mm -hmm. Satan was completely wrong. Sin cannot be tolerated in the smallest, tiniest amount mm -hmm. whatsoever. Like, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, the, a terrible pandemic, right? And you can't allow a single person to have this infectious disease or else it'll end up with the entire planet having it. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing. Oh, so we got the verse. Okay. Yeah, Wendy, Nathan, like one nine, right? What do you conspire against the Lord? He will make an utter end of it. Affliction will not rise up a second time. Yeah, this, I mean, look, God's calling, basically referred to even sin as an affliction. Mm -hmm. Like, almost like this illness. God's going to make sure this illness, this pandemic of sin is going to be over for good and never will come back. But exactly. in order for that to work, we all have to understand how terrible it is mm -hmm. and, and reject it and accept God's ways. Mm -hmm. And those who choose not to accept God's ways will be destroyed along with Satan. Mm -hmm. That's and, sadly the only way to do it. But I think it's important to note there that it's that there's like God has grace, right? So like, well, I mean, that's the whole point of this. Yeah. It, 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 it's this is God's ultimate grace. God yeah. is suffering along with us. But, and, He's so patient. And, and, and it's, it's, you know, we, we, the key here is to reject, sin in our own life and to change from that sin it's not that we are to reject those that are sinning or reject you know other people it's the it's the what we're getting at here is that god wants us to reject the sin in our life not reject ourselves but reject the sin that's in our lives 
so that we change from that and follow his ways. And that's the, you know, that's the key. Yeah, I mean, Peter says God is long suffering so that, you know, none will be lost. God is, God is letting things drag out so as many people could be saved as possible. So mm -hmm. we're getting, yeah, it'd be nice for Jesus to come today and just take us away. But that means that then some people might not have had the opportunity to really learn about Jesus, why they really need him. Mm -hmm.